Welcome to the Picture Show. We're back from spring break, and uh, we kind of spruced up the uh, place a little bit, new posters, everything. Today, we're going to be talking about a new movie that just came out March 14th. It's Tomb Raider. We're going to see if uh, we finally got a good video game movie. Let's take a look at the trailer. What's your name? Laura. Sunny? Croft? Laura, your father's gone. You can pick up where he left off. I see so much of him in you. Brilliant. Hello, Sprout. If you're listening to this, then I must be dead. I found something, a tomb called the Mother of Death. If Trinity succeeds, our world is in danger. Promise me you will stop them. I promise. I think I know where my dad went. That's right in the middle of the Devil's Sea. It will be an adventure. Death is not an adventure. shouldn't have come here. <gasps> but I'm glad that you did. What do you know about my father? Now I see the likeness. The recklessness. Close the tomb once and for all. The fate of humanity is now in your hands. Can't be too careful these days. The world has gone bloody mad. I'll take two. And that was our first look at Laura Croft. Today, I'm your host, Alex Richardson. I am also joined by our guest, Riley Wilkerson. Riley, usually do our graphics for the show, but today you're on the show. How do you feel about that? I feel great. Y'all finally got me out of the booth and let me watch a movie, but then I have to be chained back up after this. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're definitely chaining you back up oh, after yeah. this. I'm going to rash, I'll be honest. Today, you, we're, we're talking about Tomb Raider. You, I would say you're one of the bigger gamers out of our little uh, group of students here in a scholarship. I've, I've dabbled. I've and you've dabbled in Tomb Raider. That's actually your game right there that's on a camera, too. Uh, so we're talking about Tomb Raider. You saw it, want, uh, bleh, went and saw it. What do you think about it? The movie? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought you were talking about the game. Yeah, the movie's really fun. It's, uh, so the game is about 20 hours long, mm -hmm. and the movie is condensed into 90 minutes, and somehow they make it work. Yeah, that, that's a big thing that uh, we, they, you get a little problem with with these video game movies because the games are usually hours upon hours of length, and then it's like, but we only have so much to do. It's actually, I think, about like 118 minutes of uh, footage. Of the, that's how long the, the runtime is of the movie. So a little it's more than 90, is it? Yeah, 118. Okay, yeah. It's yeah. so about two hours. How do you do math? Oh uh, yeah, but uh, but like you said, it works for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I enjoy. I really, I very much enjoyed it. Well, I'll uh, be honest, like, it, like even in the video game, the uh, bad guy is even sympathetic. Like, mm -hmm. he has. Is it the, the same kind? Because you played the game, I have not. So I just went and watched the movie. Okay, so in this one, they love talking about Trinity. Like yes. that was the main. I want to believe when they made it mm -hmm. that um. That was not an idea. Part of me likes to believe that they didn't think it was going to be successful as it was. Mm -hmm. And once they realized they got to make a sequel, like, okay, what's the reason Laura has to keep fighting people? Okay, make it a big corporation, ambiguous. Is Trinity in the game? Trinity is in the second game. In the That's second when game. they get mentioned. Like, okay. This one, it's more he's working for somebody and blah, blah. So on the second one, they just retconned and said, oh, it's Trinity. Is this pretty much... Um, like very similar to the game. Like, is this the same villain in the game? Yeah, pretty much. It is. Uh, I believe the character's name Matthias. Uh, yeah, it's played by Dom uh, Walton Goggins. He's Matthias Vogel. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that actor. I'm always excited to see him. I believe he was in the Hateful Eight, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, maybe. Did I, you? I, I not seen. I'm very glad to say that I have not seen the Hateful Eight. That's a really good movie. But um, we're talking about Tomb Raider. Yes. So, uh, I'm always excited to see him. Uh, yeah. Well, we're. Uh, as we're going on, we're going to talk about let's see, well, this was directed by a uh, very interesting little director name, Vor Uthwag. Oh, dude, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that, that is a, actually a pretty good name there. And that's, it's already made $28 million US. Really? Saying that, though, 
It's not been the most well received by critics. It's like at 50% Rotten Tomatoes, about five out of, or seven out of 10 stars on IMDb. I don't like those scores. I think it deserves higher. I, okay, so like how, what, we say 50% is about average. Yeah, yeah. 70 is about, uh, yeah, 70 is about above average or 80. Mm -hmm. like that, I say it's about 70 to 80. I think one of the problems is it's like a lot of tropes in this, which the video game is playing a yeah, lot of tropes like, on other it, stuff. You can say this as tropes, but this makes the original Angelina Jolie movies look like someone spit in your face. Pretty much. Like it's, they're atrocious compared, they were atrocious already. Mm -hmm. Compared to this now, they are a joke. Because this, like it's, we'll talk about the story real quick a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's Laura Croft, her dad's missing, that's like a big thing about Laura Croft. And she's like basically trying to live her own life, but she's like, she doesn't want to admit that he's dead. She's like her own, she's her own person. She doesn't live in a, uh, oh yeah, and her dad's uh, played by Dominic West, who's also known as Richard Croft in the movie. Uh, but see, she doesn't want to admit that he's dead because if she does, she gets inheritance and then it's just sad for her. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to live her own life. She's her, like, she, she delivers food. She, she can't even pay her gym membership because she doesn't have any money because she doesn't want to take the inheritance. Right, it, it seems like she wants to be her own person. I think so, the movie is trying to push Yeah, and it's, it's a good adventure. origin story. Yeah, oh, Much yes. better than the Angelina Jolie one where you see her and she's fighting robots. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where it was a little silly. I'm not saying they're, like, if anybody enjoys them, that, you know, that's your own thing, but for the most part, they're just fun little movies. I would go as far to say that they're wrong for enjoying those movies. How could someone be wrong about their opinion, <laughs> It's Alex? just so, they're such bad movies. Okay, some people enjoy those bad movies. Uh, you know? Like, they're cheap. They're like, the, they're like the kind of fun that you're like, it's like, I want to watch something bad to laugh. Okay, I could, yeah, I could see that point. Like, no one should go into that movie thinking, it's like, this is truly Laura Croft. Well, nobody, I'm not saying they should, pair, should compare it to Godfather, but I'm yeah. saying like, Awesome, dumb little action movie. Let's yeah, yeah. But uh, so from there, which is I would say is the attitude that you should come into this movie. Yeah. yeah. So from there, we see like we see that she's young, she's she's athletic, she's trying to live this world, and then she gets a little hint of her father, mm -hmm. basically because she was like she's like I gotta sign that inheritance, and then we we see her first little uh, puzzle where she basically finds his hidden room of just stuff. She's in like a little video record. It's like it's like hey, so uh, I am not the guy that you thought I was. Here's a little bit more of what I'm I've done. I'm actually Django Fett. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. And so it like, sits her off on this adventure. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll admit, by the way, I, if I had that clue, mm -hmm. would never would have found out. The, the letter of, of my death? Yeah, the letter of my death. The first letter? And now it's just, okay. But so, because like, the adventure starts. Like, I would say like it didn't take too long to get that adventure started. I was pretty happy with that. It, they could have stayed on her origin, her like beginnings, way too long. And it got like I was like I just want to I came here to see Tomb Raider I'm watching Lara Croft it's not the same thing but they got into it pretty quickly I want to say like what 20 minutes in she was already in well, was it China or was it she went to like I think Thailand Thailand something like yeah yeah like but, and like and by the way do you remember the email yes uh, it said twenty thousand no what was it seventy thousand USD mm -hmm. I was like aren't they in Britain why are they using the United States money yeah the uh, no. why did you just say pounds little goofs. But uh, so she meets up with uh, Daniel Wu, who plays Lu Rin, mm -hmm. who is uh, bas becomes her sidekick throughout the movie, kind of her, her helper, and uh, takes him to like the deadliest sea, in, like in the like the deadliest island in the ocean, mm -hmm. where the the adventure starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that from what from what we got, I really I, just, I enjoyed it. I heard a lot. A few people talk about it as a B movie mm -hmm. with good budget. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Uh, just based on the fact that it's very tropey, like, oh, her father's dead, oh, he's not, uh, this and that. Some things you can kind of tell, like, oh, this is the bad guy, and he's going to do bad guy things. His motivations might be different, but you can assume where he, this is going to go. So I can understand when they say that's B-movie, because yeah. you kind of borrow from other material. But like, I like to believe that it works to its advantage. Like, Even though you know what's going to happen, it's done well. I want to say though, with the uh, because you brought up the bad guy, Matthias Vogel. I feel Matthias. So, Matthias. Matthias. I feel. Uh, Sorry, it's your show. You pronounce. I, <laughs> I feel sympathetic to him. Oh yeah. He's yeah. been stuck on this island for seven years, and like the moment you talk to him, he's like, "I just want to go see my two daughters." Dude, that moment. Like, I think it's the same thing in the game. Like, he's doing all this bad stuff, and he's not. I'm not saying he's a good guy for like making people enslaved and all that, but once he realized, like, I want to go home so bad right now. I don't care I'll do how. anything it takes. Right, I'll kill a sick guy. I just want to 
go home. Yeah. Right. And I'm curious, like how we, like how we haven't worked them to death in seven years. Um, yeah, I would think the food rations would go depleted pretty. Well, I'll take that back because he they, they do. Yeah, they days, do. So they yeah. get people coming in, dropping stuff yeah. off a lot. But uh, I was just like, it was it was strange that like I didn't expect to feel sympathy for a Laura Croft film because usually they're pretty over the top. Right. It's and like, so she's a good guy. Bad guy's just bad. Guy. Yeah, yeah. And so this like. He, he was definitely a bad guy, oh, yeah, bad yeah. person. You can't like him too much. But I was, I, I there's points of me. I was like, I kind of want him to go home. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like the moment he goes home, he'll just be a better person. Around his kids, like he's still thinking about all the guys he killed, and his it's children just like, are just like daddy, and just hugs yeah, all around. Definitely. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I can see him integrating back into society. Well. Yeah. Well, before we go on any further, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to uh, take a look at what's new to Netflix and DVD. So stick around, check that out, and meet us back here. If you're part of an average American family, you may eat as many as one in five meals outside the home. When eating out. Children like to choose their dinners from the kids' menu, but should parents let them? That was the topic of a recent study by the Center for Science in the Public Interest. The study found that many kids' menu options met the government's daily recommendation for children, 1,500 calories and 17 grams of saturated fat, in just one meal. While adult menus have gotten healthier, most kids' menus continue to mimic fast food choices, but with bigger servings. More healthful options than the ever-present burgers and fries might be pasta with tomato sauce and a side salad, grilled chicken, or grilled fish. Parents may want to consider the number of healthy choices on the kids' menu before choosing a restaurant. The number of overweight and obese young people has nearly doubled in the past two decades. Good afternoon, moviegoers. I'm Danny Foots, and this is this week's Netflix and DVD Picks of the Week. First up on Netflix is going to be The Brothers Grimm, starring Matt Damon and Heath Ledger. Will and Jake Grimm are traveling con artists who encounter a genuine fairy tale curse which requires true courage instead of their usual bogus exorcisms. The second movie is going to be one of my favorites, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, starring Kristen Bell and Jason Segel. After a devastating breakup with his TV star girlfriend, Peter takes a vacation to recharge his battery. Little does he know his girlfriend is traveling to the same resort as him and she's bringing along her new boyfriend. Next up is I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, starring Kevin James and Adam Sandler. Two straight, single Brooklyn firefighters pretend to be a gay couple in order to receive domestic partnership benefits. Coming to DVD next Tuesday is going to be Downsizing, starring Matt Damon, a social satire in which a man realizes he would have a better life if he were to shrink himself to five inches tall, allowing him to spend his wealth and live in splendor. Pitch Perfect 3 is going to be the next movie coming out, starring Anna Kendrick and Rebel Wilson. Following their win from the second movie, the now-separated Bellas reunite for one last singing competition at an overseas USO tour. And last up is going to be Jumanji. This is the remake to Jumanji, not the 1995 one, starring Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. When four teenagers are sucked into a magical video game, the only way they can escape is to work together and finish the game. Once again, I'm Danny Foots. This has been this week's Netflix and DVD Picks of the Week. Let's get back to the picture show. We're back talking about uh, Tomb Raider, and uh, today... We uh, have Riley, as I said, and uh, we are talking about, like I said, Tomb Raider. We are now to the island part. I want to quick talk about the uh, story. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the fact that it's based off an actual Japanese princess, Himiko. And like it's, it's, this whole idea, because like, they're talking about the curse of Himiko. She's this supernatural queen who like spreads disease and death as, with every touch. And, like, and like, she did that until her general was buried around her mountain. And so this whole time when going to the movie, like, this sounds cool, but I really don't want, like, stupid supernatural stuff in this movie. It could be so much cooler without it. And so, like, the entire time I'm dreading the reveal that she's, like, a demon goddess or something like that. And spoilers, she ain't. I'm really happy about that. Well, the, there was a line in the movie that's, like, sometimes myth is based on reality. Yeah, and exactly. That she even, like, Laura even says that. In like that's in the movie, a lot too. yeah, because she was like, because she like as they're figuring out, she's like, myth is like, oh, that's right, myth is something, but like she's like, it's a virus, and I thought that was, like, I thought that was genius, mm -hmm. a lot of genius. I was just really happy with it mm -hmm. because I was like, they could have so easily went with like bad CGI and made her some ghost queen, and she was like, oh, disease, like we have to seal her in the tomb. I didn't want that. 
But now, like, no, it's like it's just a disease that they didn't know anything about, and they thought it was magic, and she still carries it in her corpse. And I was like, that's perfect. Right. That's what I, like, that's exactly what and I needed. That was another part of the scene where, like, sympathizing with Matthias. Like, okay, he is, one of the bad guys gets it on him, and they die horrifically. Yeah. And it's pretty, it was pretty bad. And it still kind of goes to his character of, like, I still don't care what happens. I need to go home. And he's yeah. just grabbing the thing. I want to go home so bad. Yeah. So you just run out of there. And uh, and like I, what I said earlier with the uh, like if they went the ghost the ghost queen route with bad CGI, I say that because I noticed there was some elements in the movie where the CGI was less than lacking. Oh, which part, Alex? Specifically the part where uh, well a few parts actually, mm -hmm. but specifically the one that comes to mind when I say it is when she's. All, like when she's on the t walking on the airplane wing, mm -hmm. and like because she's uh, about to fall over the waterfall, and then as it starts to crumble, she jumps. She jumps into the airplane, and then as that starts to crumble, which good God, no. everything's just going wrong Dude, for her. After you do this, <laughs> I have something to say. Yeah, uh, everything's just stuff. going wrong for her at this point, and then she falls out and grabs a parachute and like opens it up, and there's holes in it, of course. So once again, everything's going wrong for her, and then she falls like she crashes through the trees. And like it's just this moment of like her hitting the ground, like trees hitting the ground, rolling and everything, and it's just like, and you watch that, and I was like, that was all CGI. And it's like you can't hate on it too much because one, actress can't do that. Mm -hmm. Two, and I was like, well, it is kind of a video game movie, right. so it makes a little bit of sense for it yeah. to be like that. And I, I don't want her to get hurt where they're like, what if they were in like some CG like green yeah. screen and they just had brushing leaves faster? That yeah. would have been a little weird. Yeah, but like it, it doesn't look bad. But I just remember thinking, oh, that was glaring. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was CGI. Yeah, that, was, that that popped out a little bit. But I would say in general, though, like. If that waterfall part was CGI, that was done amazingly. Oh, is like, that what you wanted to talk about real quick? Oh, no, no. Well, I want to talk about, like, the video game and, like, the movie. Okay, go ahead. Kind of hinges on, like, it's basically Laura Croft Torture Simulator. It starts with one thing, and then it just snowballs, like, oh, I got away from the bad guys, but I'm in this river. Oh, okay, I'm in the river. Now there's a waterfall. Oh, God, what do I do? Oh, there's an airplane wing. Grab that. And then airplane wing goes into plane, plane falls. Oh, I got a parachute. Yeah. And now and then uh, at the end, now there's a stick in my stick. Yeah. Uh, I, there's so many instances in the I video game of like. Speaking of the games specifically, I've seen some of the death scenes. They're, They're really pretty awful. horrendous for a uh, for a Laura Croft <laughs> character. See, I I dodged a lot of them except one where you're going down water and those like just limbs sticking straight out, mm -hmm. and I couldn't like it took me six tries to get around them. So I, I'm sorry, repeatedly. Did this feel a bit lethargic? Like, where you're like, it's like, yes, I got past it. Yes, I got past it. But you're not even playing. You're just watching a movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, there was moments of like uh, at the end where it's, this place is crumbling and she's jumping. I'm like, press X. Oh, oh wait, this is a movie, stupid. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that does show that it's a good video game movie. Mm -hmm. If you're watching it and you're actually feeling like, like, I was like this really makes me think of the game. Mm -hmm. No one wa went and saw the Mario Bros. movie and thought, like, this really makes me think of the game. No one went and saw Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat and was like, this really makes me think of the game. But if you're watching Tomb I th Raider. I think Doom is like the biggest culprit. I, like, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that one? <sighs> nope, I specifically did not watch it. Oh, good. I, <laughs> Grant, I enjoy it to a certain extent because it's got The Rock on there. Yeah. And, um, it's fun. Oh, and Carl Urban's on there, and I yeah. love that dude, too. But they have, like, this horrible, like, at the end, like, first-person thing, yeah. and it's not done very well. That's what I'm saying. Like, so if, if you're going to Tomb Raider, and, like, even for a split second, you think, like, that really makes me think of the game, mm -hmm. it's done its job. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Do, it is a faithful adaption to Tomb Raider, the game, that I specifically am ready to see the sequel for. See, the biggest, like, paid promotion I've ever seen that worked for me was Need for Speed with Aaron Paul. Because... I watched that at like nine o'clock at night, or like I got out late. And after I watched it, I wanted I couldn't stay under sixty. <laughs> I wanted to go fast. And I remember like I want to race so bad right now, so I went and bought the game. Uh, but that was something I wanted to say was like if you enjoy this movie, you'll probably really enjoy the game as well. Yeah. Because it's it's fairly easy. It's very fun, and it, you're gonna see some same stuff like again how they squeezed what you say 118 minutes like two I'm sorry 20 hours into 118 minutes mm -hmm. is awesome how they 
B2B2B and it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think if there's any one thing I want to say is like I just kind of wish she had a little red pickaxe more in this movie. Oh, yeah. and it's almost become synonymous with her character, and she gets it within like the third act of the story. Right. Oh, third act. Or the end of yeah, the third act. The, yeah, end of the third act. That also, there's a little snippet at the end of the movie that I really enjoy. You thought it was overly cheesy. I thought it was just the right amount of cheesy. <laughs> is when she gets the, uh, like she goes back to the uh, pawn shop where she gets her necklace from and sees the pistols mm -hmm. that she, play, that she uh, uses in the game, and she's like... I'll get these two. And like she does the pose, and I was like, you know what, you earn that cheesy moment. I just feel like the developers like tried really hard to get away from that because it's like it's, she's not using guns anymore. The tone, it's a bow and arrow. The tone was completely no the tone was completely different from the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. When she did that pose, it was like, yeah. But I was like, you know what? Kudos to you. You've okay. got you like you deserve that yeah. little cheese. And before we talk any more really about the movie, we're going to take a quick little snippet of uh, what's good for Friday this week at our Friday Flick Pick. Everybody check it out and come back for some final thoughts. What's going on, Mood Flickies? I'm Terry Hawkins with this Friday Flick Pick. And this week we have Pacific Rim Uprising, starring John Boyega and Scott Eastwood. Jake Pentecost, son of Staker Pentecost, reunites with Mako Mori to lead a new generation of Jaeger pilots including rival Lambert and 15-year-old hacker Amara against a new kaiju threat. Let's see that trailer. Jake, your father always said he wanted you to be a pilot. He said a lot of things. I'm not a hero like he was. The kaiju. They're gonna come back. I'm not gonna be stuck waiting for someone else to come save my ass. Cadets, you better gear up. How'd they get into our world? Someone let them in. Someone from our world. Who is that? Definitely not one of ours. Let's do this. This is your chance to make things right. We're gonna need more pilots. We have them. There are pilots we remember as legends, but they didn't start out that way. They started out like us. This is our time to make a difference. Do you understand? Jaeger pilots, do you understand? One way to find out. That's what I'm talking about! Now that was a trailer. All right, that's all for Friday Flick Picks. I'm Terry Hawkins. Back to the picture show. I'm definitely watching that one when that comes out Friday. Uh, we only got a few minutes left for the show, so give me your final thoughts on Tomb Raider. I would like to say, if, if you enjoyed this movie, then I say go play the game. Because it's longer, you have more of it, and you're actually doing the stuff. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. And, um, and it's a really good movie. I, I would say watch it, too. If, like I said, if you're like down for tropey stuff that you're not expecting, like, oh, it's Godfather of like Indiana Jones or whatever. Uh, then, you know, don't come to this. But it's, it's a lot of fun. I would definitely also say go watch it, specifically because it's a good film. I think the story's paced really well. It's a good message of just, like, even, like, woman, women empowerment because she is strong. Oh, I wanted to She add, goes through uh, a lot of like stuff. Like, originally, she's just, like, a female Indiana Jones. Yeah, and then she's a female, a like, character. who was made, made as an icon of, like, 
of a sex symbol. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And it's not the case right now. Either. And I think that's a much better improvement with this character specifically. Uh, I would, like I said, definitely go see it. There's, there are some moments where it's like, it's like, ah, okay. But for the most part, I heavily enjoyed myself. I wasn't, I wasn't left in the theater like, it's like, is this it? I, at the very end, I was like, I want to see what happens next. Right. And so I very much enjoyed it. I would give it, I would give it about a seven or eight out of ten. About the same. About uh, because. Right, while it is a it's good film, there's, original, there's some, so, and it's hard to be original when you're based off a game. Yeah, that too. That so, too. like, and as you said, it's taken almost verbatim from the game for, like, for, like, you're not verbatim, but, like, very heavy points. Right. You know, plot points, boop, 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 the beats, yeah. I'm sorry, the beats. But, uh, so if that's all we have to say, then we're going to say, go watch it if you can. Tune in next week as uh, we talk about, uh, I think everybody, like, a dog lover's wildest dream, an island full of dogs. We're talking about Isle of Dogs. See you then.